Hi, so this is a video in a series I'm doing on mixing jazz and today we're going to be starting with the kick drum. So we're going to look at a kick drum in uh, an arrangement and listen to what it sounds like before I do anything to it and then what it sounds like afterwards and look at the process that I go through in order to get it to sound the way I think it should sound in the mix. Now there's a big variety of jazz. It can go anywhere from very sparse acoustic ballad to high energy um, electric band and anywhere in between. And the kick drum, like all the other drums, and other instruments need to be sounding their best in any context that they're in and that means that you have to do different things in the mixing and we're going to start here with a an arrangement which is an electric band it's got a full keyboard covering the full frequency spectrum or a large area of the frequency spectrum it's got electric bass and we're going to look at the kick drum and see how we can get that kick drum to punch through all that and still sound as natural as possible. Because to start with, as you'll hear, it's just not cutting through. Um, I'll do another video after this, which will be looking at an acoustic, much more sparse acoustic um, jazz um, arrangement, and you'll see how we'll treat the drum, the, the kick drum very differently. So, starting with the electric sound, let's have a, a listen to what we've got. Okay, so here we are. Now, this track has got quite a dense arrangement. Uh, it's got keyboards and synths, electric bass, and electric guitar. And together they're filling up quite a lot of the frequency spectrum, which is making it hard for the kick drum to, to cut through. So, I'll play a little bit of the track without any processing on the kick drum, just so you can hear where we're starting from. So you can hear that it's it's pretty hard to hear it a lot of the time. There are places where you can hear it and places where you can hardly hear what it's doing. And it's certainly not driving the track. There's not a lot of low end weight or punch to it. And so a track like this, I think, really needs the kick drum to drive it. And that's just not happening. So what I'm going to do now is put in the processing. Well, first, I actually think what I'm going to do is play the kick drum a little louder so that you can hear what it would be like just to turn it up a bit. So I'm just going to put a gain plugin on here and just turn it up a couple of dB here and you can see what the difference is. So I'm up to almost 5 dB gain here and it's still not that easy to hear all the kick drum hits and we're getting now a pretty muddy low end. That kick drum is is now kind of dominating too much, it's mudding up the low end and we're still not hearing it that clearly. So that's the problem we're up against. So what I'm going to do now is put in the, the uh, processing I did so you can hear what I've did and then we're going to go through and, and look at um, look at each of the processors. So I'm going to start from the beginning here. So it's much easier to hear every kick every hit of the kick drum and it's really giving it a lot more punch and drive because the low end is much more prominent without it being at all muddy so I haven't had to turn it up um, and yet it's easy to hear it and it's providing more drive so 
just checking that this is down at zero. So I'm going to turn that off and get rid of that. Now, let's start at the beginning here. Now, this is the Sound Relics drum leveler, and it is an amazing plug an amazing piece of technology. It can act as a compressor limiter, um, but it's unlike any other limiter or compressor in that it has zero artifacts. So most of compressors and limiters, in fact, all compressors and limiters that I know of apart from this one, they react to the input sound and they will affect the transient, either increase it, decrease it, and also the release of the compressor or limiter affects the, um, the tail of the sound as well. So you're gonna change the tone, you're gonna change the envelope of the sound. However transparent it is, it's still going to have some effect on that. And obviously that's often what you want. But in terms of leveling drums, you really don't necessarily want that. If you, if you want to do that, you're going to want to use a dedicated specialist compressor for changing the tone of the drums. But if you just want to control the level, um, you just can't use a compressor limiter for that unless you really want to hear a change in the sound, which you may not want. Whereas what this can do is it's it's really akin to imagine that you took went through each kick drum and and sliced it up with an editing tool and literally turned the volume up and down for each one to make them even without in any way affecting it because you can make that slice a little bit before the kick drum starts and you can get rid of the slice when the kick drum is completely finished resonating that's what this does. It reads ahead, it can identify the drum hits, and it literally turns them up and down as if you'd done it in editing. Um, it's fantastic. But what's also really useful about it is that you can use it as a gate, and it is the most transparent and effective gate I've ever used on drums. So that's what I'm using it for here. And I'll just explain why. It's simply because... Um, when you hear other drums coming through drum mics so this is a kick drum and you can hear some of the other drums coming through the drum mic now in an acoustic setting a trio a sparse trio that's a really good thing especially if you've got a nice room sound or if the kit is the type of drum kit that resonates nicely amongst the drums then you you really kind of want to pick up those things but in a situation like this where the drums need to cut through and you're going to have to do some processing on them. The lead through of other drums to the kick drum mic is only going to be a problem. It's not going to add anything to the sound of the kick drums in this context. It's going to cause mud and it's going to cause worse problems when we start to process the drums. It's going to start processing those bits of snare drum that come through and other cymbals and things like that can become more prominent um, if you start compressing and doing different things and so and EQing. So, in a situation like this, I generally will gate the, the drum. It's not 100% necessary, um, but I'll show you what I've done here. So this is, this is I'm going to have it out, and then I'm going to engage it after a little bit. So you can hear it incredibly effectively gates. I mean, a few snares leak through because I've got the release and the holds quite, quite long because I didn't want to in any way interfere with the resonance of the kick drum. Um, but those few odd uh, snares aren't going to cause a problem. But in general, it's cleaned it up a lot. Now, this is not 100% necessary, I don't think, in this case. But uh, if I know I'm going to have to do quite a bit of work on a drum, I I often gate it right from the start just so that I don't have to deal with problems later on. So we've got that. Now next I didn't I didn't feel that the attack of the kick was coming through. It sounds pretty muffled in the context of the mix. On its own, not too bad. But in the mix it just sounded muffled and hard to distinguish the kicks. So I use a transient designer and I think this is a really excellent one this waves one. I also use the Sonox Involution which is very good too. But this is excellent on lots of things, not just drums. It's actually really good on, say for example, you want to take the edge off a, 
a guitar or something like that. It's it's great for all sorts of things or a bass. So what I've done here is I've increased the attack a little bit. So I'm going to play a little bit before and after with this so you can hear what it does. So, not doing a huge amount, um, and some of the kicks already have attack because it varies quite a bit because it's very he's a very dynamic player. Um, but what it's doing is just making sure that the softer hits have a little bit more attack. And although it's not doing a lot, you know, in general, I find that doing a little bit with a number of processors gives you a better result than doing a lot with one. So, the next thing I felt was that. It needed, it needed more uh, thickness, more um, more cut in the in the click area. So this is an SSL uh, uh, emulation, an incredibly accurate one by uh, Acoustica Audio. Um, I've done reviews on some of their plugins, and they are amongst the best plugins out there in terms of realism and sound. And what I'm doing here is, and the reason I chose this one is because SSL um, consoles can have, and this particular one has a really nice smearing, thickening sound to the transients when you boost up in the area of around 2K. It's, it's a little bit aggressive sounding and that's just right for this kind of a situation. And I've also boosted in the lows here. So I've boosted around 2.3K quite a bit. Um, and it's probably going to sound like too much, but in the context of the music, it, it works. And then I've boosted around 60 hertz here, about 2 dB. And then I've cut a little bit around 250 hertz here, just to pull a little bit of mud out of the middle of the upper lows of the kick. And that tends to have the effect of increasing the weight down below. So. Let's have a listen of this one before and after. So I'll start with that out and then I'll bring it in. So you can hear you get a lot more click, but you also get a much solid, more solid, punchy low end from this uh, EQ configuration. Now I could get a similar effect with other EQs, um, but I always think that this these SSLs sound nice on drums, so that's why I've chosen that one. Now next I wanted to get a bit more control in the kick and I wanted to pull the attack out even a little bit more. So I use the Distressor. It's a Distressor emulation. It's actually a very accurate one. Um, and um, by SK Note Audio. And it's actually not that expensive, but it is actually really an accurate emulation. It sounds very, very much like the real thing. And this is a compressor that does many different things, a Distressor. And what I'm using it for is to increase the attack. So I've got a really long attack here. And the attack is long enough that it's letting quite a bit of it through. So you know, if you have a, an attack that's long enough to increase the transient, because it's going to let the transient come through, but still not too long, you know, 30 milliseconds or 20 milliseconds or something like that, depending on the compressor and how the compressor works, you can increase the transient but it can get a little spiky. Uh, what I wanted was I wanted punch. And so I widened the attack even as much as I could get it. And that allowed more of the tra a wider area of transient to come through before it clamped down on it. So, and I felt that gave it more, uh, not necessarily more click, but more punch. So, and a bit more click. So let's have a listen to this before and after.
So again, like the transient designer, it's I'm not doing a huge amount with it. It's not like massively increasing it, but it is. It's giving it some more, a little bit more punch in the low end and increasing the click a little bit too, but not in a kind of too sharp of a way. So that was next. And then one other thing I'm going to explain actually before I go on is that I did all of this in the context of the mix. So, you know, you have to do that. If you try and design a kick drum sound without listening to it in context, you'll never get what you want. So some of these changes might not sound necessarily what you'd think of doing if you're listening to the kick drum on its own. You think, well, is it improving the kick drum sound? Or it's changing it, but is it better? And you just keep in mind that these are all changes I made while listening to the music and getting the effect I wanted within the music. And so that's the case as well with this, this compressor here is that this was helping it cut through in a way that didn't get too sharp, but at the same time added weight and punch. Now, the final one is this one here, and I just felt that it needed some more low end. Um, it needed a real, you can feel it in your chest kind of low end because of this particular track. And there are so many EQs to choose from with any job you have at hand. And I just had a feeling that this one was going to do it right, and it was it, it did. It was exactly what I wanted it to do. So we're going to have a listen to this one before and after. So hopefully, if you've got good headphones or you're listening on decent speakers, you can you can hear that this is adding a real. Um, I mean, this is down at 40 hertz here. These are set preset frequencies on this one. Um, it's it's adding, and I'm actually I'm cutting at 160 as well a little bit here again to pull out a little a little bit above that because I didn't want it to boost up the the frequencies too high. I just wanted to get that really low um, feel it in your chest punch. And for me, this has really done the trick. So I'm just gonna do again now a little bit before and after. So I'll play it and then I'll, I'll put them in one at a time as we, as we go through. Actually, I'm gonna start with them out. Okay, so that's without, and then I'm going to put them in. So it's got a lot more weight to it, a lot more punch, and you can hear the click more. But out of context, there's no way of knowing whether this is all right. So putting it back in context, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start with it out, and then I'm going to put them in. Yeah, that's a lot easier to hear um, every hit of the kick drum. There's a lot more drive to it, a lot more weight and punch. And um, the dynamics have been pretty well preserved. I mean, it's probably a bit louder now. I'd probably turn it down a bit. Um, but nonetheless, I think it's going to work a lot better in this track. Um, so I hope you found that useful. Uh, maybe picked up a few tips. I'm going to do another... Uh, kick drum video soon which will be the opposite end of the spectrum where I'm going to be looking at an acoustic uh, much more acoustic setting where the kick drum wants to sound pretty radically different than this um, and 
that should be an interesting one too. So yeah, if you found this interesting, do leave comments and questions and subscribe and uh, see you next time.